Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I'm your banner pilot. Coming at you on this beautiful Wednesday. Well, kind of. It's kind of cloudy outside. I was going to be better weather today. But uh, that's all right. Um, so, some of you may be wondering, where's Metroid Prime 2? Uh, I, uh, I made a post on Facebook, but I need to set up my Twitter, so... I can make that my main uh, news page. Uh, basically, because it's spring, uh, I want to do, or because it's the first week of spring, I wanted to do something kind of small. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of sticking to short games today. Uh, I'm going to be playing a little bit of F Zero X and uh, maybe a little bit of Puzzle Bobble or Bust a Move 4. Um, because I kind of want to enjoy uh, some outside activities, if I can. Uh, and if not, you know, I've got other things I can do too. Uh, but, no worries. There will be Metroid Prime 2 next weekend. Um, as for the Friday gaming situation, uh, I've decided I'm going to give it a try and do it. Uh, I seem to be getting Fridays off more often. Um... However, I will say this, they will be smaller, because Fridays are usually the days I go over to my folks' house, uh, and that's like a couple, or a little ways for me to drive, so uh, they're going to be short uh, if I get to them, and uh, they're not always going to be guaranteed on Fridays, but I'm going to try and do something. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, it won't be this week uh, that I start those, because uh, I've got some birthday stuff to do. Uh, next week, though, I should be free to be able to start doing that kind of stuff. So, with all that being said, uh, this game right here is F-Zero X, if you haven't been able to see that right now. Um, F-Zero X is by far my... I want to say second favorite N64 game. I think my first favorite is still Smash Bros. But uh, this one is pretty fun. It's your standard racer with uh, certain mechanics that involve uh, these little hovercraft here. Uh, they're super fast, very fun uh, racetracks. Uh, just so much in this game. Uh, I'll go ahead and start it up. I was very fortunate to get this game, uh, especially with how it came, because uh, I am doing novice. Uh, I'm not that good at racing games, but, uh, you know, since it's going to be short, I'm going to go ahead and just show off, like, the first cup. Maybe a little bit of the Queen Cup. I've never beaten it, but uh, this one I have, so. As you can see, though, the reason why I was happy with getting this was because of the fact that uh, I got this cartridge with everything unlocked. So, uh, cool thing about N64 games is, if you get them used, you're usually getting like an ultimate version that you don't have to put too much work into. Uh, that's not to say that all versions are like that. Believe me, there are going to be some that don't have the they don't have save data on them. Uh, some I must have like cleared their data or whatever. Or the battery save, well, I don't know if they have battery saves on N64 cartridges. It might be a save chip, but uh, they might have gone out or have been used one too many times, uh, thus getting rid of all the old data. But fortunately for this one, I have gotten a complete file, I think. Uh, maybe some might just use the cheat code system or something. I wouldn't be surprised, but that's all right. Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, explain some things here. So, you can choose any one of these machines. Um, each of them has their own specific uh, stats. So, I see, like, uh, the, the pilot's photo uh, up in the top left-hand corner. That doesn't really matter too much. Uh, that's just to give your racer an identity. Uh, underneath that, though, 
you'll see body, boost, and grip. And under each of those is a letter. Uh, obviously, it's a letter graded system. So typically, you're going to want to try and find a bounce for all those. I think this guy here, the writer of the Blue Falcon, uh, Captain Falcon, um, I believe he's the most balanced out of them all. Uh, there's, there's some that I haven't really messed around with too much. And every now and then you'll find, uh, you'll find a relatively good one. Well, not every now and then, but you'll find them as you look through the list. Uh, but I, for one, always stick with Captain Falcon. It's my go-to. Um, mainly because he's a memorable character. But, uh, also, just look at that ship. It's beautiful. thought there was a way to spin it around or show it off, but whatever. Uh, here, I should explain this. You can change, uh, your car's, or your, uh, machine settings. So, you can either make it go all the way to the right and get max speed, make it go all the way to the left and get acceleration. Uh, acceleration makes you start up faster, but at the risk, or at the loss of your max speed. Max speed will make you go as fast as you can. However, you will not jump to that speed or initially. Uh, it'll take time to get up to that speed. So, uh, I always choose uh, right around here. Makes it about average. But once you get that started up, uh, you get the countdown sequence, everyone starts up their engines, and then you just blast off. Controls are pretty simple. You just steer left and right. Um, push A to go. B, I think, breaks, but I've never been in a moment where I needed to do that. Uh, if you really need to slow down, you just let go of the A button. <laughs> um, those yellow arrows on the ground are boost pads, so they'll make you go faster for a short amount of time. Um, unlike most racing games, this game has a health meter. So you'll see in the top right hand corner there's an energy meter. Uh, that is your boost power, which we just unlocked after the first rate, or first lap. Uh, you can activate that pushing the B button. That's right, that's what the B button is. Uh, you will lose energy though. This purple stuff here will recharge it. And every time you hit a car or a wall, uh, you will lose a little bit of energy. So while you do have boost powers, you gotta be careful. You gotta save that energy for when you need it the most. Uh, while also watching out to uh, avoid getting destroyed by other cars. You can actually destroy others in this game too. Uh, if you double tap the right trigger or the, uh, the Z button, uh, you can bump into them. So like that. Uh, as you can see, it turned red. I don't think you lose any damage doing that, uh, but you can definitely damage the other car because uh, it counts as an attack. Uh, if you do left, or er, Z and R, at, or like simultaneously, or not simultaneously, uh, if you do Z and R one after the other, you'll do a spin thing. Oh look, I won. Uh, you will spin your car into others. So kind of like what you'd see in Speed Racer, the movie. Maybe that's why I like this so much. I actually like that movie. Uh, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Your only goal in this game is just to, uh, you know, get first, obviously. And as you can see, uh, the results screen and basically just your uh, your overall progression is a lot like how you'd see it in Mario Kart 64. You get a certain amount of points depending on the placement. Typically, you want to get first, but uh, you know, it's just about like Mario Kart, so. There is the top ranking board, so you know, keep an eye on that. Um, hopefully, I get him first. I don't know, it's been a while since I've played this one. Um, but anyway, so the F-Zero Jack Cup, all these cups are going to have like six racetracks on them. Uh, you go through all of them, and at the end, you know, you either get first place or nothing at all. <laughs> Uh, but we are going to jump onto the track Silence and race our hearts out.
By the way, I would like to point out, this has some of the best music in an N64 game. I know that a lot of people will say, oh, it's it's Zelda Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask or whatever. I, I beg to... Well, it, it all comes down to your preference. Like, if you like a melodic or melody type uh, soundtrack and one that's, you know, kind of easy on the ears, uh, you go with uh, Ocarina of Time and any Zelda game, really. Um, but if you like super hardcore pumped kind of music and stuff, this is right up there. I would say this is probably my favorite soundtrack for uh, N64. Whew, did you see that guy? Looks like somebody on the, the highway around here. People are nuts on this highway. Uh, you also see that this guy up in front of me has a rival marker on him. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's important. Uh, but it does pop up, so just keep an eye on it. I don't think I'm going to win this race. But then again, I'm not really here to win anything right now. Mostly today, it's just showing this game off and stuff. Uh, if I win, cool. If not, I'm not going to be too bent out of shape on it. Honestly, I, I got this game right after watching uh, an Oni Plays of the expansion kit that's made for this game. And I'll go into detail on that. Um, but uh, I got like really excited about this game because it looks so cool. And I've played GX before, which is the GameCube uh, sequel to this game. Very fun. Uh, if it were cheaper, that would be a game that I would love to have right about now. Uh, but unfortunately, that one's a little more expensive. But, uh, yeah, the disk drive system uh, was an attachment for the N64, which allowed you to uh, play your games, or play speci special games for that system, which, you know, typically had more on them than a, t a typical uh, N64 cartridge. Uh, they weren't, like, spectacular in any way, but... Uh, they, they were pretty cool. Um, I would say if you ever find one that's like under $500, uh, the disk system anyway, you know, definitely don't pass it up. If I had the money to get one, I would totally get one. Because I would love to get the games for that system. Uh, specifically the expansion kit for this game. Because uh, that kit allows you to make your own uh, racetracks and your own racers. Granted, it's limited, but uh, it's still cool because it's a sense of customization. I'm like, hey, this is my racer. It's very neat. Uh, but again, it's a very expensive uh, setup to get. Uh, the system itself is like $1,000 nowadays. Uh, and I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that somebody finds a way to make, like, a third party version of it because certainly with all the or with all the video game stuff coming out nowadays whether it be like new cables the plug and play for the GameCube you know somebody's got to make a a uh, an adapter or something for the N64 that lets you play those games and yeah you know technically you could get a flash cart and do it that way, but uh, that's no fun. I mean, it's it's not fun at all. You really want to have uh, the original software and stuff because with the original software, let's say you have a cartridge that has everything unlocked, because uh, you do have to have F Zero X in with the expansion kit. That goes without saying. But um. You know, with an EverDrive, that's a fresh new ROM. You know, you're not going to be able to... Or you're going to have to go through and unlock every single one of those characters. Now, if you're really good at the game, you know, good for you. Uh, and I guess the old adage goes, you know, get good. But, uh... <laughs> uh obviously, when I, when I picked up this game, I was really hoping that it would have all the characters unlocked. Because, you know, 
I, I just want to have fun with my game. And uh, it's kind of like with Smash Bros. You know, it's, it's cool to unlock them and all, but when you've got friends over and stuff, you want all that stuff, you know, pretty much unlocked and ready for the get-go. <sighs> so, I was very, very lucky to get this. Man, Black Shadow is like right on me. No wonder he's right. He's my rival. Ah, uh, Devil's Forest. This one will be fun. But anyway, uh, you know, if any of or if any of those game developers out there are listening, like uh, Retrobit or whatever, you know. It, <laughs> I, I'm probably a small minority, but I would love to see a uh, disk drive, a third-party disk drive, uh, made for this system. And then who knows? Maybe release like an ultimate cart that has like all the games on it or something. But I digress. Let's get back to the race. So this one's a little weird. That gravel stuff on the side, I think it makes you lose traction if you run over it. There are certain services in this game that uh, will hinder your maneuverability and whatnot. Um, like, for instance, there's going to be a blue floor, I think, on the last track. That's going to really make you lose traction. Uh, in fact, you'll just slide right off the track if you roll over that. Or, I guess, fly over. Oh, um, L and Z triggers, they make you veer, so, you know, along with your steering controls on your analog stick, uh, if you're coming into, like, a tight corner or whatever, be sure to use the, the L and Z buttons, because they do make your turns a lot easier. Now, if you're like me, when you first got this, or when I first got this game, uh, you'll have third-party N64 controllers, which, for this particular game unless you're adjusting your car, is actually like kind of a cheating kind of way to win. Uh, those analog sticks are going to be super sensitive. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't even worry about veering. If anything, you oversteer with those sticks. Yeah, I'm 40 points ahead of uh, Black Shadow. Well, we still got two races to go through. So that being said, let's go ahead and race. By the way, I uh, wanted to point out for all you Smash Bros fans that are watching this, uh, Mute City was the uh, the track that you play on in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and this one is the unlockable Big Blue from uh, Smash Bros. Melee as well. Um, they're a little bit different. Uh, in design, well, or Mute City looks pretty much the same. Uh, Big Blue, on the other hand, no, that's uh, a little bit different. And there's no uh, Great Falcon in the background or whatever. I don't know why my acceleration was all the way up there like that. It, it, that's the other thing. They they save your uh, your settings after races for a certain amount of time. Uh, so if you have like a special way you want to play this. Uh, oof. you know, it'll save it there. Anyway, there's a new obstacle in this race. Uh, this is a snake. Uh, every now and then, somebody will fly off. You you definitely can fly off of this and fall to you uh, to your death. Uh, <laughs> so you know, make sure you balance out your your stats and stuff. Because if you go too fast on this, you will fly off very easily. Uh, and on certain Certain custom tracks that I've seen, you know, for the the expansion pack, you know, <laughs> people make these kinds of tracks and they fly off of those every time. Like right there, I just about flew off, uh, barely, but uh, still kind of noticeable. I don't think I've ever gotten first place on this. I'll see what I can do. I don't know. That says that that really goes to show how good of a player I am for losing on novice. But uh, eh, you know. Some games I'm good at, others I'm not. 
I just play this one just to have a lot of fun. It's kind of like with Smash Bros. It's just that one game that you have to play uh, with friends, and, you know, just to have fun. It's a good uh, time waster, I guess. You'll see that my car is flashing red. Uh, when you get low on energy, it'll start to warn you, and it'll beep and stuff. Kind of like how it does in Metroid, uh, minus the flashing. Yeah, I lost that one pretty badly. But that's alright. I think I'm still in first. So where am I? Okay. So yeah, uh, I'm getting tailed on by Leon, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Next is Port Town. Uh, I don't remember this one exactly. I do know that this one's going to be kind of rough. So this might be where I start getting in the second place. Hold up. I've been noticing lately that my uh, my uh, Twitch settings say that I'm away when I'm doing live streaming. I don't know why. I'm right there the entire time. And it doesn't stop the streaming or anything at all. But anyway. By the way, that robot guy's voice is like super cool. Don't know why. It just it for me it makes it feel like, uh, or I would say that uh, it, it gets you pumped to race. It sounds really cool. There is that blue stuff. Do not slide on that because you will slide into the wall. And some of these tracks don't even have walls, so you got to be careful with those too. On this, uh, make sure you point down because you will fly out of those walls and stuff if you don't. So, I'll go ahead and use some boost here. Uh, <laughs> I am just getting destroyed here. I might actually blow up on this track. Hopefully not. Oof. Please don't bump into me. <laughs> I don't want to explode. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Some people say that the uh, N64 controller's analog stick is like super good because of its sensitivity. I, I beg to differ. I mean, it's it's a good analog stick, but uh, I do believe that there are better well, there are better options when it comes to. Uh, oh wow! I actually blew up. There's better options when it comes to sensitivity on a controller, and I for one don't like high sensitivity. Uh, I actually prefer, I I kind of prefer what the game, well, not even what the GameCube has, uh, kind of like what the, the DualShock controller has. Uh, it, I feel that one's a lot better in terms of sensitivity, allows for a lot more precise movement. Whereas with the N64 <laughs> controller, playing games like Quake and what, uh, those are just terrible. Though I don't really think that this system was really there to cater at all to any first-person shooters. My goodness, that one always just destroys me. You'll notice that I'm oversteering a lot. I'm not sure what's causing that. It's probably the speed, but we'll see. Remember to aim down when that comes up. This is a hard track. As you can see, I am like way behind in this race. I mean, I can boost up, but then there's always that little curve right here. And I always overshoot it, or undershoot it. And then I use my boost at like the worst possible time. Hopefully I don't blow up. Uh, come on. Uh, you will 
start to flash red more and more as you get damaged, so just keep an eye out on that. Oh, I just... Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, uh, don't hit me. Don't hit me. Okay. Alright, that was better. Oof. Oh, dope. that was pretty bad. I almost fell off there. <laughs> Oh, well, fourth place. Not terrible. Not great. But, uh, it'll work. I think I might have gotten in the second place. Uh, oh, I'm in first. Barely, but I'm in first. And that's that. For the first rate, or the first cup, anyway. This will just do a quick recap of who got first. Or your stats on each of these races. Pretty neat. Uh, it shows you your progression and such. And your top speed, too. That's always a plus. It also shows second and third place uh, racers. Don't know their names, don't really care too much about them, but uh, it's cool. And you get a big old firework with the uh, shape of your face. But that's about it for uh, for that. You can go through and you can choose all these other races. Uh, so you know, we just did the Jack Cup. And it goes the Queen, King, Joker, and then the F Zero X Cup. Uh, I haven't really dared go in any of these. I mean, I'll, I'll race in them, but I never win. Uh, so, so typically, when I'm playing this game, I usually just go for the Jack Cup, and I always do it on novice, uh, mainly because I don't have to go any higher than that. And uh, I don't know. I come to this game as just a, a little break from other games that I play. But as you can see, there's other options. There's a time attack mode. Very good if you have the uh, 64 disk drive system and the expansion kit because that basically allows you to test out all your tracks. Very fun. Then you've got Death Race. Now, I'll, I'll show off Death Race in a minute. Um, Death Race is basically that it's a good way to harness your skills for you know, taking out other racers on a track. Uh, it's always the same track for this mode, uh, which is basically just one giant loop-de-loop. -loop. But your goal is to take out every single racer on that map. Uh, pretty, pretty neat little concept. Very hard to do, especially when you get to the last few cars. Uh, or, I'm sorry, racers. Because uh, they're so spread out and stuff. And depending on your speed, you gotta be able to catch up to him. So, uh, anyway, after that, there is also versus battle, which isn't gonna let me select it because I've only got one controller. Uh, the cool thing about the N64 was that it had four controller ports, so four-player action, very fun, um, which makes it pretty much the ideal party game system. Uh, that's why Mario Party was such a big deal when it came out. Uh, but this game has four-player racing mode as well. Does the split-screen thing where everyone's in their own corner. Um, yeah, 
I I don't really have any any friends that are really excited to play this kind of game. So, uh, you know, uh, every now and then I'll get somebody to play it with me. Uh, for the most part, though, I usually just play this one on my own. Uh, so, I won't be able to show that off, but it's still something to keep in mind. Especially if you're looking for multiplayer games, if you have an N64. Uh, N64 has, like, a really good library of multiplayer games. Uh, dare I say, more than the, than the Dreamcast. Uh, though I, I personally still find the Dreamcast to be a bit better as a, as a console. But, I can't deny that the N64 has a lot more, uh, you know, multiplayer friendly games. I mean, you've got games like GoldenEye, F-Zero X, uh, all the Mario Party games for it. You've got Smash Bros, which is like the holy grail of multiplayer games on here. Uh, Wave Race 64. Uh, even the Quake games. There was Quake 1 and Quake 2 on this thing. And they're they're pretty fun. I think that the controllers or the controls for those are kind of lame. Uh, particularly for Quake 1. But they're still a good time. Um, what others are there? Ugh, oh, there's so many others. Oh, Mario Kart. Duh. <laughs> uh, Mario Kart, that's definitely a fun one. I would say that's probably my favorite out of all the multiplayer games on the system. Uh, Super Mario, or Super Smash Bros. That's a pretty close second. Um, and that one's definitely not for everyone. Mario Kart, though, that one is for everyone. Uh, you can pretty much jump right into that game. Um, and that's about it as far as multiplayer games go. I mean, if you want to go into more obscure ones, you know, I would say that Conker's Bad Fur Day had a pretty fun multiplayer experience. Uh, it's a little weird, and it's, <laughs> uh, I don't really care what kind of games you guys play, but, uh, you know, or what kind of games you let your kids play, but, you know, it, Conker is definitely one of the more adult games for the system, uh, which is weird because Nintendo doesn't normally release M-rated games, or at least back then they did. I don't know about now. I mean, now on the Switch you've got like Doom 60. Uh, I almost said Doom 64. Uh, wish that game was multiplayer. Uh, you have games like Doom. Uh, Wolfenstein 2 is going to be coming out for it, and uh, the Skyrim and other. M-rated games. Even Dark Souls is going to be going on there. Uh, which are all M-rated games, and they're pretty graphic. Uh, whereas, you know, back then, Conker's Bad Fur Day was such a big deal for the for the Nintendo crowd, because it was like it was a super violent game, and it had a lot of uh, really adult themes in it. Uh, but anyway, that's a, that's a topic for another time. Maybe someday I'll grab that game. Uh, but till then, I don't know. I've got that on Xbox. Maybe that'll be a game I'll play on Fridays. That one's a pretty fun one, and it'll end up being pretty much a quick stream every day. But whatever. Anywho, then you have practice mode. Uh, practice mode is essentially like time attack. Time attack keeps your your time trials though. Uh, there's no like time limit that you have to get the race done or whatever. Uh, it's basically just a, a way to harness your your speed and make those tracks or make a score for yourself on those tracks. Uh, then of course you have practice, which is just I don't know if you go against other racers or not. I think you do, but for the most part, the races don't count. Uh, you're just driving around and harnessing your skills, so. And then of course, options, you know, there's not a whole lot here. There's, uh, versus computer for second player, third player, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is if you, or for two player or three player. This is basically just adding in, uh, two cars if you're on two player mode, and three car, or another car if you're on three player mode. Uh, so you've got a computer player versing against you. Personally, I think that the game's best played if you've only got player or actual human players playing.
because the computer players, they have an advantage, uh, hands down. Versus slot, don't really know what that is, but I don't really care. Handicap uh, basically makes it so that you can, uh, you know, somebody has less less damage or more damage. Or, yeah, less, more damage, uh, endurance, and whatnot. And then your sound mode, mono stereo, pretty typical. All clear data, I'm not staying on there. <laughs> I'd rather keep all my stuff. But that's about it. We'll go ahead and, you know, we'll, we'll actually just uh, do death race. And for this one, I'll choose a cameo character. Well, Wy or the little wyvern belongs to a racer known as James McLeod. And for Star Fox fans, uh, James McLeod is the name of uh, Fox McLeod's dad. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they are not related in any way. It's just a small little Easter egg, I guess. But basically, it's a it's a Star Fox reference. Even the design of them looks pretty much like uh, how they do in Star Fox. Man, that would be a fun game to do on Fridays. Maybe next Friday I'll do that. Anyway. So, here's the race. Uh, you do get boost... <coughs> you do get boost powers already, and you have your abilities to uh, heal yourself. But, again, you're pretty much just trying to destroy every other car. Uh, it'll show, you know, how many cars are left on the track. So, pretty, pretty simple. Definitely one of the more uh, morbid game types. On the right of the screen, you'll see that there's a star there that just tells you how many cars you've personally destroyed. Got an <coughs> sorry, got another one. Sorry, my my throat's kind of dry. Told myself I was gonna bring me another drink in here. That was my bad though. I was kind of hoping to destroy one of them, but that's okay. Oh, almost missed my health pickup. Whoop. Well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. That's okay. We'll give that one another try. Let's see if I can get a spin in there. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very, uh, very violent game. I hear it's a lot easier. <coughs> it's a lot easier to uh, kill other cars in uh, the end, or the GameCube version. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. I remember the GameCube version being really hard, though. That's for sure. Uh, which I guess added to the challenge factor. I like the GameCube version, though, because you could make your own cars in it. At least that's what I remember, anyway. Maybe it was just paint designs that you could add to uh, existing cars. I don't think it had a track editor, though. Man. <laughs> Let's give that another try. I at least want to get, like, three cars taken out. Love that spin move. It's just so dangerous to pull off. Hey, I got somebody. Oof, really gotta be careful on those turns. Or on those edges.
Oh, whoops. All right. For any of you N64 fans out there that are wanting like a good racing game, there, there's plenty of racing games on the N64, mind you. Those guys just fell right off. Those, or maybe they didn't. I don't know. Uh, but if you're looking for a good racing game, you know this is definitely one. Um, I would say though that there are a lot more on here. Uh, there's there's quite a few. Um, there's Cruising USA. <coughs> Um, that one's that one's definitely fun. I remember playing that at my uh, my grandparents' church uh, here and there. Um, what other games are there? There's a lot more than that. There is like a I can't even think of them. There's like a beetle racing game or whatever. That one was pretty fun. Yeah, got him. Uh, or you just race VW Beetles. Uh, I believe there's the... there's an arcade port of a racer in, on the N64. Uh, I believe it's like... it's... oh man. <laughs> Talking and trying to take people out is really hard. Um... Gosh, what is the, that mean? Maybe it is cruising USA. Cause there's one where you can drive around as like a a uh, Humvee, like a military Humvee. Wow, that was quick. Uh, let's just restart that. <laughs> um. No, nah, well, I'll figure it out later. Point is, there are quite a few racing games on the system. Uh, a lot of sports games on the system, too, if you're ever interested in playing some of those. Uh, I, for one, don't really care too much about sports games. Uh, unless it's racing. Then racing, you know, racing games are definitely fun to play. Uh, NBA Jam is pretty fun too, but uh, I don't think there was an NBA Jam on the N64. I know there was one for the Saturn and for uh, PlayStation, I think. Gotta be careful though. You can blow up just as easily as they can. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. I know last stream I was coughing a lot. And I hope I didn't damage any of your guys' ears doing that. I'm a lot less congested this time around though, so. For once, I actually feel pretty good. Not sure how the rest of spring will work, though. I have terrible spring allergies that come up every year. Uh, it's always blossoms, like cherry blossoms and stuff. Walk into like a like work or something, and everybody looks at my eyes and they're all watery and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, what's what's getting you?" It's like nothing. I'm just uh, my eyes water because of the cherry blossoms. <laughs> Happened a lot back at school. Everybody would be like, oh, he's crying. No, I'm not. Alright, somebody's gotta show up. There's gotta be somebody here. I'm tempted to just break and see if uh, anybody comes up behind. But you gotta be careful doing that because they can bump you around everywhere, especially here. That'd be horrible. I 
Man, every time I play this match, I uh, I always think back to high school uh, during science class. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys ever did this for your science classes, but we were learning about kinetic energy at the time. So, uh, you know, we got to make these little roller coasters uh, for science class. I remember doing it in 6th grade and ninth grade. Very fun. Uh, ninth grade was the best, because that was where I met one of my best friends, Zach. Um, but uh, we basically would take pipe insulation, and, uh, you know, they look like little swimming noodles and stuff. Uh, basically, the goal was to uh, cut it and then shape it into this roller coaster. Oh, there's a car. And, you know, you'd make loop-de-loops and all kinds of fun stuff. Stuff that you'd see on a roller coaster. But then you'd take a, a marble and you'd see if it would last uh, inside of it. And uh, the goal was to make sure that it got to the other side. Ah, got my three. Very neat little concept. I wish... I, I wish that... Uh, if there was one thing that I could do again, that would be something I'd love to do. I feel like that would be a waste of space in my room, though. Gosh, that was fun. I think we got ours to work correctly. I think there was one person who had his fly off or whatever. We were put in the teams, though. I remember it was Zach and Jason that I, I was with. Both of those guys were really fun to hang with. I wouldn't say they were the best influences, but uh, they were still fun. Man, to hang out with uh, with Zach a little more. I never see Jason, but that's because he's all all around the world. Uh, but Zach, though, man, I know he lives around here somewhere. Ooh, I almost fell off. <laughs> I think I blew him up. Nah, I didn't. See, you really want to take him out on those, uh, those sections where there's no walls. <laughs> oh, that was a bad spot. Oh, got somebody. There they are. I guess there is another sports game type that I really like. I really like uh, skateboard games. Or at least I used to. I don't really like uh, um, Project Skate. That one was kind of boring if you ask me. I don't know. I I grew up with uh, with Underground and a little bit of Pro Skater, more so the Underground series for Tony Hawk games. But uh, I don't know. I liked them. They they had a lot of uh, interesting content in them. Uh, I don't know. They just made for a lot more exciting games as far as sports go. Uh, as for games like football games or, you know, basketball games, uh, except NBA Jam, you know, I don't really care much for them. There's another one. The NBA Jam is nothing like I remember it. I remember NBA Jam being a lot more, like, crazy looking and stuff. So there was, like, the arcade version 
I don't even know if it was NBA Jam. Maybe it wasn't. But uh, I remember this base or basketball game where you could play as aliens and stuff. And when you'd slam the dunk every now and then, you'd uh, or slam dunk the hoop or whatever, you'd uh, set the thing on fire, or you'd break the glass behind it or whatever. And that happens in NBA Jam, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. But uh, I don't remember there, or I haven't seen any like aliens in the game or whatever. I have uh, I have NBA Jam for the the Saturn. It's a 3D version of it. So instead of them being just 2D sprites, they're 3D generated characters. Whew, almost fell off that time. I'm gonna tell you this, I am not getting the personal best time on here. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh well. We got a whopping seven cars taken up. But that's okay. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's go ahead and swap over to uh, Puzzle Bobble or Bust Move as it's known as it's known in the US. I just think puzzle bobble is a lot more of an exciting uh, exciting term for it. Anyway, I am going to be uh, shutting this off. Sorry for the black screen. Yeah, it won't take too long though. I just got to figure out which cable it is. Probably should have had this prepared before. Oh, okay, it's Bust Move 2. Never mind. Uh, we'll still play, but uh, I thought it was Bust Move 1. Or, 4. Yeah, so, cool story about this game. Um, I got it after getting... Um, or, I got it with another game that I ordered on, uh, on Amazon. Uh, so I was really only expecting one game, and that game was uh, Panzer Dragon 2, I believe. But they gave me an extra one. I was like, that's pretty cool. Happened to be my uh, favorite arcade game. Play it a lot at the arcades now with, uh, with my roommate Hunter. Not so much the second one as I do the uh, the first one. <sighs> Forgot how short the controller cord for that system was. Uh, again, I am playing this on the Sega Saturn, so. Be the first time I play this for any of you. That's not it. Nope. Nope, that's not it either. So, let me go ahead and just reboot that for you guys. I think everyone should be able to see the uh, intro screen to uh, one of my favorite systems of all time. 
Plus, there's probably, probably a lot of people that don't even know about the Sega Saturn. Well, not so much map nowadays. Uh, basically, this system doesn't normally boot up into this menu. Uh, this is because I'm using an action replay cart, which acts as two things. One, action replay, duh. But it also acts as a... Uh... Whoa, that was weird. My OBS just, like, disconnected for a minute. Huh, hopefully that doesn't ruin the video playback or whatever. But, whatever. Uh, if you're getting into uh, collecting for the Sega Saturn, um, one thing that you'll know is, or you'll notice, is that American copies of games for the Saturn uh, are a lot more expensive than Japanese versions. So, the cool thing about the Action Replay Plus is it allows you to play import games from uh, Japan or uh, maybe PAL areas. I'm not entirely sure about that one though. But every game that you're going to want to look for that doesn't exist in America is going to be over in Japan. That card allows you to play them. So it's pretty much like a region unlock system. Um, pretty fun. I do believe that uh, you know it's it's definitely the uh, the ultimate little game add-on uh, because it basically does three things in one. Um, if you are getting into collecting, though, I I strongly advise getting this mainly because Japanese games, uh, while they're a lot more over there, uh, all the American games or game versions are going to be a lot more expensive than the Japanese counterparts because they're a lot more made in Japan. Saturn in America wasn't very popular. It actually like kind of died off pretty quick. So uh, for those of you who are looking for, you know, getting into collecting, uh, there's a lot of Saturn games that don't require too much uh, knowledge of Japanese language or whatever that you can play pretty easily on this system. Just make sure you have that action replay cartridge. But anyway, I am talking on and on. Let's go ahead and start this up. Unfortunately, I haven't collected a whole lot for the Saturn. There's a lot that I want to get for it, though. Um, namely, some games, but there's also, like, a bunch of, uh... Or there's one specific add-on that I really want to get for it, and that would be the, uh, the CD, uh, movie drive. Or the CD card for it. Basically, this allows the system to, uh... Oh, that was a really quick intro sequence. This allows the system to play CD DVDs or CD movies. Uh, very cool little feature. Uh, you, there's not a whole lot of CD movies out there, but one of them in particular is a non-special edition, I think non-special edition version of Star Wars Episode Four, uh, which has Japanese subtitles. The 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 dialogue in it insult itself is actually American. So, you know, that that sounds like a pretty cool little addition. It also adds more sprites of animation to certain games, so if you can find a cheap enough copy, go for it. But with that being said, let's go ahead and play some puzzle bobble. Or bust a move uh two. Uh, arcade edition. Uh, you can find this game as a standalone, I believe. Uh, and if not, you could definitely find it in uh, uh, Neo Geo MVS cabinets. Very fun. So we're going to go ahead and do a puzzle game. No, it was intended. Uh, it's a little bit different than normal bust move. Uh, as, in terms of progression, but the game itself is pretty much the same. Fun little puzzle game. Oh, that stunk. Uh, you'll see right now that there's a dotted line that it gives you. That's to aim. And it's pretty handy for the f first part of the game. You will eventually lose it, though. 
uh, sadly. But that's just a part of how the game rolls. But your goal is to clear every single one of these uh, these colored sections. Uh, they got rid of the dotted line. There's a lot that are really easy in this game, though. So uh, the faster you get these done, the better your score is going to be. Very neat. Um, yeah, I can make that. Yeah, cool. Don't know why I did that, but whatever. <laughs> Worked out in the end. But the faster you get these done, the more of a bonus you'll get from the game. I don't think I'm going to make this. Oh, we did. But, uh, you know... Mostly you're just playing this for points. Nothing too special. Uh, again, you don't want the screen getting too far down, because if it hits the bottom of the screen, then you lose. So, just keep an eye on how you're doing. I'm not doing too great here, but we'll see how it goes. Ooh, that wasn't good. Uh. <laughs> oh, that is not good. <laughs> okay. No, that is really not good. Oh, man. Oh, please give me a purple. <laughs> oh, no. I am so dead. That was terrible. They didn't even give me a... They gave me a purple right as I died. Fortunately, they give us a generous nine credits for this game. And then once you die, they give you the little thing back. But again, only for one round. I used to see this game at arcades all the time, and I can never understand why people liked it so much. But it's a it's a genuinely fun game. I think it's one of the more addicting games for the system. Or just the arcades in general. Uh, especially in the multiplayer. Uh, things get pretty heated when I play with Hunter. So, you know, we're always on top of our game and always trying to find ways to get each other destroyed. Sound direction in this game is pretty cool. Definitely feels like an arcade game. You guys probably can't hear it. And if you can, you know, cool. But I don't know. Um, oh, that was nice. Let's see. Yeah. Still, still manageable. I'm trying to get Hunter to play this with me here at home. We always go to uh, the reset games nearby, which uh, you know it's pretty fun. I, I enjoy the arcade scene a lot more than just playing at home. Uh, it's it's definitely expensive, but you know. It's fun because you get to socialize with others and stuff. Makes for a more enjoyable time. It's not like sitting at home and just waiting for somebody to join your, your lobby or whatever. And for couch for couch games like this, you know, uh, that's not really a luxury you have anymore. Well, I mean, you can go out on like Xbox Live, and you can uh, you can find friends on there, but it's not the same as going to like an arcade joint or whatever. Wow, that was a really cool uh, explosion right there. 
Um, but I, for one, don't really like the whole Xbox Live scene. I think being able to play with a friend, like, right next to you or whatever, or just an, an actual person, not just somebody's avatar, I think it's a lot more uh, enjoyable to play with someone in person. Well, that's just me. I mean, if if you like Xbox Live, you like Xbox Live. And that's perfectly fine. I, for one, prefer human-to-human -human interaction, though. Maybe I'm weird, but that's okay. I do see Xbox Live as having perks, though. For instance, uh, with... Uh, you know, your friends that are, like, really far away. Like, let's say, you know, you've got, like, my friends that are all the way over in uh, the south or whatever. You know, it's it's kind of hard to keep up with them on phones or whatever. Uh, so, you know, you got to do online gaming with them. And, I mean, if you can keep up with them. I, <laughs> I don't have any of the numbers of my old friends nowadays. I probably wish I did. Those guys were cool to hang with. Where I learned a lot of my video gaming uh, tricks. <sighs> As you can see, your little guy down there gets freaked out when it gets too low to the ground. Should have took him, or taken that one out, but whatever. We still got this. He's all worried, but it'll be fine. I hope. <laughs> Getting a little worried myself. Uh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. No worries. We still got quite a few credits left. Maybe I should do game showcase days or whatever. Why just show off like a, a console and uh, let you guys see what kind of games I have for it. I don't have like the biggest console collection, but I've got I've got a sizable one. I guess for the budget that I have, it's pretty nice. What am I talking about? For the budget I have, it's fan friggin' tastic. Oh man, that would have been perfect too. Love how worried he is. Ye of little faith. Oh, sorry. Not a whole lot to say about this game. It's basically your typical puzzle game. Um, and this game has been ported to so many, or made for so many different consoles and stuff. This is a pretty hard one to pass up. I would say if you're looking for like a, a neat little time waster, or uh, just a game that you want to really challenge your friends in, uh, this is definitely the one to play. Because as a multiplayer game, well, like I said, it it can get pretty uh, pretty crazy after a while. Especially with the combos you can make in this game. You know, you provide provided you don't mess them up, <laughs> uh, like I am. Oh, 
No biggie. No biggie. We got this. Nope. No, we don't. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, we still got this. Here we go. We won. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, little guy. I'd be worried about this too if I were you. <laughs> These are a little too close to for comfort, in my opinion. But not anymore. Recently, I figured out that there is also a bust a move on Facebook Messenger now. Uh, I think just on Facebook in general. Uh, I've I've played a little bit with it. It's an okay game. Uh, it adds a couple things that make it a little too easy. Kind of takes the challenge out of it, in my opinion. But eh, it is what it is. It's made for a new generation of players, so. Can't go wrong with that. Nice. Oh, there's still one up there. <laughs> kind of hard to see sometimes. For a game that they call Bust a Move, you'd think that they'd have like some pretty, a, a little more groovier music than uh, what they have in here right now. I mean, it's it's good music, but when I think Bust a Move, I think of uh, I don't know some like disco music or something going on. Oh, this is not looking good. Not looking good at all. <laughs> okay, now it's looking better. Uh, <laughs> all right, I got this. Maybe not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, uh, came down too quick. Afraid, little man. Be very, very afraid. <laughs> oh, this isn't providing me with too many uh, opportunities here. Whoa, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, I can't 
can't do it there. <laughs> if I do it there, I'm gonna... No! This is where I die. <laughs> They're gonna drop the ball. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, that, that's okay. We still, we still have our upper hand here. Oh. Sorry I'm being so quiet. This is, uh, It's not because I'm trying to focus or whatever. Um, there's just not a whole lot to say. This is pretty. This is a pretty self-explanatory type of game. Um, definitely one I recommend you pick up if you can find a copy of it. Oh, eh, I'm just gonna give up there. Gosh dang, dude, this is hard. <laughs> oh, that stinks. I actually had like a an opportunity to get rid of that there. Got to use that foresight. Oh, I should have done that one. Oh well. Can he do it? Oh, thank goodness he can. Barely. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I think I've hit my uh, my peak here. I wish I would get sunny outside. It's it's a really dull day out there. If I could just get a tad bit sunnier. Yeah, I've messed this up pretty badly. Oh yeah. Nope, I lost. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. I'm like barely hanging on here. <laughs> oh. Yep. There's only so many times you can make it a little dinosaur cry. Uh, quite the tragedy. Dang it! <laughs> ah, no! That uh, that was like super super close. Still probably gonna lose this one, but uh, eh, it's whatever. Okay, let's.
let's uh, clear out that green there, clear out this yellow, clear out that yellow. Oh no! <laughs> Went too fast. Okay. We still got this. We can do it. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. Ooh. Oh, I am just done diddly done for. <laughs> All right, we got one last try. Got to do something here. Let's put that on the side, and this on the side, and that there, and that not there, <laughs> but okay. Uh, shoot, that really messed it up. Okay, so that there, that goes there. Relax, my little dinosaur friend. We still have this. I think. Oh! It knew, it knew. <laughs> okay, let's set that there. Uh, this is just gonna have to go over there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I have really trapped myself here, though. I could probably do it there. Okay. Okay. Oof. <laughs> oh no! Yep. Didn't think we'd be able to do that. Well, on the plus side, we got the fifth place. No biggie, though. It's just the uh, the way the game rolls. I think that's enough of that. I guess I'll throw on one more game for you guys. I know that today was supposed to be like a short day, but I'll throw on one more. It'll be a quickie. If if it's the game that I think I have. You know what? We will do one more game. And that will be just a quick race on... Uh, uh, let's do Daytona USA. I was thinking F1 Challenger, because that one's just a tad bit more fun. But Daytona USA is like a classic. Can't really say no to that one. By the way, I would like to point out the uh, N64 or the Sega Saturn controller. That one that's being shown right there. That one's actually a really cool-looking controller. Uh, although, if you're if you've heard from anyone about this system before, you'll know that it is not the best system, <laughs> or it's not the best uh, controller. The Model 2 is like a lot better in terms of functionality, anyway. Anyway, let's pop that bad boy in. Okie dokie.
this is one I haven't played in a long time either. So, cool thing about this game is, uh, you can play it like the original arcade mode, and you've got your Saturn mode. I think Saturn mode adds, like, I guess a campaign mode or something, or maybe it allows you to customize your car. Uh, typically, you just stick to arcade mode if you just want to do fun, or little fun matches and stuff. Uh, ranking is basically your scores, and then options, uh, it'll give you, you know, pretty much just a overall layout like what you'd see on an arcade dip switch system uh, although with dip switches you're actually using dip switches so you can change the game mode it's normal grand prix endurance uh, we'll stick to normal difficulty will be set on easy since it's default uh, enemy level easy default uh, sound mode well, obviously stereo and then you've got your music test and your sound test. And then your key assign, it's pretty much what you'd expect. We'll be uh, using type B since it seems to be a little more, a uh, little bit easier to use. But you've got like all these other ones here. Uh, you know. And then even with this, they also allow like custom controls. Uh, even with this though, this isn't the only way to play Daytona USA with the controller. Uh, you can also uh, you can play this game with the 3D controller. Uh, almost all games play with with uh, both the original and 3D controllers. Uh, although 3D controller doesn't get used for everything. Um, but I prefer playing these racing games with just the original controller. Uh, I think though that the racing wheel though that came out for the system is the definitive way to play racing games on uh, Sega Saturn. But I think that's the, the definitive way to play racing games at all. Uh, particularly like old arcade style racing games, especially if they have force feedback. Uh, unfortunately the Saturn racing wheel does not. But, uh, it still looks like a really neat looking wheel. It looks sturdy, and hopefully someday I'll, I'll manage to get one. But, for the time being, it's a little expensive for my taste. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into a quick race. See if we can win. Um, go ahead and do beginner. And yeah, we'll go ahead and use a manual. Start your, Start your engines. Pretty much already in fourth gear. As you can see, it's not the most precise racing, but it's still, it's still enjoyable. Oof, that was bad. Yeah, I probably should have stuck to an automatic transmission, but that's okay. Uh, one racing game I would really love to get for the Saturn is uh, Sega Rally. Uh, if it's even for the Sega Saturn, I think that might be a Dreamcast game. But regardless, uh, Saturn and Dreamcast both have really good racing games. I think the Saturn is probably the king when it comes to racing games, though. Uh, can't go wrong with Initial D. That's that's definitely one I want to pick up someday. Oh man, I am a huge Initial D fan.
like out of all the racing games I've played in arcades, I think Initial D racing games are by far the best. Plus, the anime is real, or the the story of the of Initial D is really fun to watch too, and read too. Ooh, that was a really bad crash. I'm definitely not winning this one, but that's okay. Maybe I'll try another one with the uh, automatic. Hopefully I can find me a copy of Initial D. I like Initial D uh, racing games because of the whole the whole drifting concept behind them. Uh, it is so easy to drift in those games, uh, especially in the arcade version, provided your your setup has actual uh, force feedback uh, and it's not worn down from just overuse and neglect to uh, care for it. Okay, I thought it froze up for a minute. I was like, whoa, what happened there? Well, 29th for manual transmission is pretty terrible, but uh, for me, that was okay. Let's go ahead and try that again with uh, automatic. But other games on the system, as far as racing games go, are, uh, you know, games like, uh, what is there? Uh, F1 Challenger, that's a pretty good one. Uh, Hang On GP, or, yeah, Hang On GP is a very fun one. Uh, that one, though, I hear you definitely need to use the uh, the steering wheel for uh, to get the most enjoyment out of it. Though I I can't say that specifically because I've never played the game. It's definitely on my wish list, though. There are a lot of games on this system that are on my wish list, though. So, but uh, that one is definitely up there in the top ten. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. And as you guys have seen in my past streams, you know, I'm a I'm a pretty big fan of the the Hang On series. I think I think uh the original Hang On is by far my favorite. But I've only played uh Hang On and Hang On or uh Super Hang On. I love Super Hang On mainly because of the uh the music in it. Woo! Fourth place. See, I do so much better with automatic when it comes to controllers. Uh, c gaming with the controller. If this were a steering wheel, I'd probably do a lot better with manual. Then again, the, the steering wheel for the Saturn doesn't have, like, a, a pedal thing. So, uh, I wouldn't have the the clutch or anything like that. It's all using buttons. And then the shifters are just little paddle shifters. I don't know how I'd do with those. But we'll see. Someday I'll probably grab one. But for now... This is good enough for me. We're just about to win this. Basically lapping everyone, so... <laughs> So yeah, that was Daytona USA, 
I would show off the other ones, but I think I'm going to call it here. It's been a good hour and a half. I'm going to try and get myself full cleaned up. I'm ready to go for the rest of the day. Uh, considering it's still pretty cloudy outside, I'm probably just going to go ahead and clean or whatever. But, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, sorry it wasn't a Metroid Prime 2 day. Uh, like I said, I really wanted to... Uh, kind of just chill out today, and, uh, you know, I was hoping to enjoy the weather, but that's alright. There's plenty more times for us to do Metroid streams. Oy, oy, oy. And, uh, you know, that'll come next week. Uh, again, we're also going to be doing short streams on Fridays. Not this Friday, but starting the next Friday, we'll go ahead and start doing uh, smaller live streams. Uh, typically around maybe an hour, hour and a half. Uh, pretty much like what I did today. Uh, and then Wednesdays will be dedicated to longer games like um, the Metroid games for right now. Uh, and then after that, you know, probably jump back to Halo. And after that, maybe jump... Well, no, I think I'll save Doom for a Friday. Because I do want to do that last level. Or the, the last episode. And, um... After that... I don't know. Maybe... Well, I don't want to do another marathon after uh, after the Halo marathon is completed. Uh, I think I've done enough marathons for right now. Um, I do at some point want to do a Sonic the Hedgehog marathon, though. Uh, only for the 2D games. The 3D games, I really could care less about. Uh, maybe I'll do... Eh, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that. Until then, I've kept you guys on long enough. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, expect to see more of these on Fridays. Again, not this Friday, next Friday. Uh, I'll try and set it up so I can give you guys a link to Twitter. I'm going to set that up today so you guys can get more news feed and stuff. But till then, uh, this has been our banner pilot. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. F Zero X Puzzle Bobble Two Bust a Move Two if you're in America. Uh and Daytona USA. So see you guys next time. I'm out of here. Take it easy.